and and we're middle of discussing a gewaldic case of Araba Kondisin Vesikech Al Gabon. We had a machloikas that Rav Yaakov was machshir, and the Chachamim were paislim. Rav Yaakov holds like Abaye, we say Godasik. The Chachamim hold like Ravam, that you need machitzes nikarais, and it doesn't work in this case. That was case number one. Ravuna came along, and Ravuna said that the machloikas is al svasaygag, only when the pillars are on the corners of the roof, because then the sides of the roof go up, of the building go up, excuse me, and we say good asik. But says Ravuna, if the Rav Yaakov Savar Amina good asik, for Rabbanan Savar Lo Amina good asik mechitzasa, Avo beem saygag divrei hakol psula. That is what Ravuna said. Seemingly, Ravuna is very simple. Why doesn't it work? Because if you're in the middle of the roof, you have no edges of your building to go up and say, Good Asik. That is Ravuna. Asked, came along Rav Nachman, excuse me, and Rav Nachman said, Be'em Sagag is a Machlaikas. The question is, asks the Gemara, Ibayulu, Be'em Sagag Machlaikas, Avla Svasagag, different called Kshira. Oidilma bim bizu bim bizu machlekes said the Gemara teku, and that is where we ended last night. We ended trying to figure out what would the reason be if these four kundisim, if these four pillars with the schach on top of it is in the middle of the roof. How would you say good asik in that case? So Rashi came along, and Rashi said that each of the pillars is a tefach. So you have one tefach and one tefach, and each side you're going to have two tefachim with a big space in the middle. How do you say, good asik? We didn't really have a good shot. How do you say, good asik in such a case? And we're going to see in a moment, it's not clear if we're even saying good asik. But that is Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman says this machlekes is even in middle of the sukkah. Says the middle of the roof, excuse me. Says the Gemara Meisvei, no hats dal kundisim ba aretz in the middle of the ground, your backyard. You put four poles in the ground, and what do you do? Visikich al gabon, and you put the schach on top of it. Rav Yaakov Machshir, v'chachamim baislim. So we have a brisa explicit that what. In the middle of the ground, if you put four poles with schach on top of it, it's a machlaikas, says the Gemara. This is clearly like whom? Rav Nachman, and not Rav Huna. Explains the Gemara, v'ha'aretz, the ground is, the ke'emsa hagag dummy, is comparable, is similar to the middle of the roof, and yet, the kamachshe Rav Yaakov, and Rav Yaakov says it's kosher. Says the Gemara to Yufta, to Ravuna, to Yufta. So we had a machlek as Ravuna and Rav Yaak and Rav Nachman. The Gemara proves conclusively like Rav Nachman. Why? Because there's an explicit brisa that says the case of four poles in the middle of the ground, and the brisa says we have a machlek as in that case. Do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? No questions. Beautiful. Yeah, we're good. Someone just give me a thumbs up. We're good. Multiple thumbs up. Baruch Hashem. So Rav Nachman is right. Ravuna to Yufta. Void. And furthermore, it says the Gemara. Be'emsa hu depligi. Seemingly, what else do we see from the Braisa? The where is the Machlaikas? Specifically, Bemsa. Aval, however, Alpsach, Alsfasagag, if it's on the edge, Divriakol, Kshira, everyone would hold, it's kosher. So says the Gemara, if that's true, Lema Tavi Tiyufta, Diravuna, Bitarti, we have a double kasha on Ravuna. Number one, where do we see the machloikas? We see the machloikas explicitly be'emsa and not al And number two, 
we see not al gag. We see that al gag if it's on the edge, everyone didn't hold his kosher. To yofta dravuna bitarti. Omar lecho ravuna. Ravuna responds. And Ravuna explains. Pligi bem zagag. The machloikas. Rav Yaakov and the chachamim. Rav Yaakov saying it's kosher. The Chachamim saying it's not kosher. Is where? Is Be'em Sahagag? Is in middle of the roof. Ve'hu Hadin. Even though it did not say it explicitly. But explains Rav Huna. Hu Hadin. The same would be true. Al Sva Sahagag. It would be the same Achlekes. So the obvious question is. Why? Why didn't this Brysa... Did they say the machlekes be'emsa? And now we're explaining that the same din would apply on the edge of the roof. Explains the Gemara. Oh, an important yisoid. But a very important idea. And then we'll explain it outside. Why did the Brisa say explicitly that they're arguing be'emsa hagag? Because this teaches the fascinating Chiddush of Rav Yaakov. That what? Even Nami Machshir. So says the Gemara. Why do we say explicitly that they're arguing Be'emsa in the middle of the roof? Because that teaches you the biggest Chiddush. Because that's the case. And you know what? It's such a big chiddish. No one understands it. I don't understand it. Do you understand it? I don't think you understand it. We explained that Rav Yaakov is very hard. If they're arguing in the middle of the roof, I have four poles. I don't have good asik. Rashi explained the starting. And we're going to say a little bit more in a moment. And tomorrow we're going to get the full explanation of this. But says the Gemara, that's why the Brisa says this case. Before we go a drop further, which is going to begin to explain this machlekes, let's. I would like to speak outside where we're holding to get the flow of what just happened. We had a machlekes Rav Nachman versus Rav Huna. The machlekes was where is the machlekes Rav Yaakov and the Chachamim. Rav Huna said they only argue on the edge. Rav Yaakov said. They also argue in the middle of the roof. We asked, concluding yesterday's year, when Rav Yaakov said they only argue in the middle of the roof, is that exclusive or is that inclusive? Do they also argue on the edge? And we said, take. Today we began by proving, without the shadow of a doubt, that Rav Huna is wrong. Tiyufta, Rav Huna, Tiyufta, and you should know the Lashon of Tiyufta is very strong. Sometimes the Gemara will say kasha. And when a Gemara says kasha, that means it's a question. There could be an answer. And we have to work on it. And Rishayin him always deal with it and give different answers. When a Gemara says to Yufta, that means there is no answer. And Ravuna said that everyone would hold in the middle of the roof. It does not work. The Gemara proved that Ravuna, quote unquote, forgot a brisa, a brisa that taught us explicitly they argue in the middle of the roof. What's the brisa? The brisa is not talking about a roof. Let's remember. What's the brisa talking about? You put four poles in the middle of the street, in the middle of your backyard, in the middle of the ground. And the brisa said, in that case, is a machlaikas. If that case is a machlaikas, clearly it has nothing to do with being on the edge of the roof. Clearly, it has nothing to do with Kodasik on the side of the house coming up. To Yufta, to Ravuna, to Yufta. Continued the Gemara, and the Gemara said, wait, really we should ask on Ravuna, Bitarti, and that Ravuna spoke up for himself. And Ravuna said, no, you know why it said the case specifically on the edge is to teach us, excuse me, in the middle, to teach us the Chiddush of Rav Yaakov, that even Be'emsa is kosher, 
And we said it's a massive chiddush. It's such a big chiddush that we're all sitting here wondering why is that true? Again, just vi- picture, visualize the case. You have four pillars in the middle of the backyard with schach on top of them and it's kosher. Why is it kosher? I have no clue why it's kosher. But the Gemara says, all we know so far is that each of the pillars is a tefach. So I have four pillars which are a tefach by a tefach. Again, square pillars about, I don't know, six inches by six inches, maybe a little bit more. And the Gemara said, that case of Yaakov holds is kosher. And we, as of yet, do not fully know why. All we know is that once there's a tefach, what's a tefach? A tefach is a shame mechitza. It's the starting block. It's something. But we don't know more than that yet. If we're clear, we'll go a job further. Are we clear? Baruch Hashem. Tanu Rabbanan. Now, we're going to go a little bit deeper into finally figuring out why would this case be kosher. Not Arba Kundisim Ba'aretz. We're about 14 lines from the bottom. The first word on the line is Kundisim. You put four pillars into the ground. V'sikech al Gabon. And you put Shach on top of them. Rav Yaakov, what does Rav Yaakov say? Rowan. Here we go. We visualize, we see. Kol. All of them. She'ilu if Yechakiku. You would chisel them out. Chakak means to dig in. You would chisel out the pillars. V'yechalku. And you would smoothen them out. Or you would divide them. V'yeshbahen. Tefach lekan. V'tefach lekan. So what's the case? We have circular pillars. And says Rav Yaakov, if you take your circular pillar and you cut one way and you cut the other way and you cut into the circle a square and what do you have? A tefach by a tefach says Rav Yaakov then nidoinim we judge it mishum diyumad it's like a diyumad now diyumad is um, an interesting word diyumad ah very good. Who's good? Very good. No. What's the case of Diumad? Very good. Around the well. Beautiful. Excellent. Everyone now, for those who didn't remember like myself, let's look at Rashi. Rashi in the medium sized lines, six lines down, says, Nidoi Mishom Diumad. Says Rashi, Ata Donu Lahachshir. Again, we have circular pillars, and we're taking these circular pillars and we're cutting them into squares. We're done, we judge them Lahachshir to make it kosher. Kidin, like the Allah Shamru Chachamim, Leinyin, Pase Birois. When we had a well, Beiravin, and we wanted. To create a situation that you could carry out of the well. But there's Euler Regalim, there's people traveling. You can't just build a fence around the well. So what do we say? Shani Turin, that we permitted it. Ba'arba Diyumdin. There you go, very good. These four Diyumdin, these four L shaped uh, beams. And on the four corners, if you remember, the picture is you have that circle in the middle, and then you have the L's around the four corners with the circle in the middle, those L's are the Diyumad, and those are Val Shem, says Rashi. Sheyesh the kol echad shtei mechitzais. Each side has two mechitzais, because again, this is one mechitz, this is one mechitz, one mechitz, and one mechitz. Karilu Diyumdin, which comes to the word Dayoi Amudin, which means Shnei Amudim. Very good. Yes, Shashi, I like that. You use the corners of your Gemara. Picture, picture that in the center of your Gemara you have a well. And the four corners of your Gemara are the four Diyumdin. These four corner pieces. Each one is a Tefach. We said then you could carry in the middle. Ah, it's completely open in between. Because it has a Tefach, 
then it's enough. He has a shame mechitza, and it permits you to carry vim love. And if not, let's go back into the Gemara. We're going to read to the two dots, and tomorrow we're going to pick up from this point and do it again. Vim love in the dynamic. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good, very good. Perfect, Shashi. Continue. Yes. Rabbi Yehuda, your question is the question. Why is that a wall? What is the world? It's a tefach. Good question. Good question. Let's just read the next the next line, then we're going to stop, and tomorrow we're going to pick up and get more clarity on this. Vim lav, ain't the yudunah mishem diyumad. And if not, it's not a diyumad. Shehoyo Rabbi Yaakov Oimer, diyum de soko tefach. Rabbi Cooper, this is what you pointed out the other night. This doesn't fit with the Chachamim iPhone 7. V'chachamim o'imrim. Ad sh'yushtayim kel chasan u'shlish is afilu tafach. So this whole din, we were trying to figure out where's the walls. Rabbi Yehuda, you were saying, what's going on? Is that a wall? That's the Chiddush. Rabbi Yaakov holds for a sukkah all you need is a tefach and a tefach, a diyumad. That's enough, just like we saw by Pase Birois. The Chachamim argue. Of course, we go with the Chachamim. Shechavra, Gracie Hashikayach. Again, I apologize without the prior notice. Mirza Shem Simchas. Let's try to read through 